What's good, everybody? My name is Mr. Peters. Today's video, we're going to look at the quadratic formula, how to use it, where to plug the numbers in, and what our final answer should look like. So when we jump into problem number one, guys, understand, right? What we're looking for is the zeros to the quadratic function, okay? And when we can't factor, sometimes an uh, alternative is the quadratic formula. And the first thing we want to start off with is the A, B, and C term. So understand that your A term is the number in front of X squared. So when we look at this first trinomial, right, we should know that A is going to be equal to 1. Then we go over to our B term. So B is that middle term that has the single X or Y, the variable by itself. There's no exponent. So our B is going to be negative 8. And then C, guys, just understand C is that constant, the number with no variable that's absolutely sitting by itself. So that's going to be negative 20. So after we find these, we know these three terms, right? What A, B, and C is, what we want to do is utilize our quadratic formula. And I'm going to rewrite it one more time for us. So the quadratic formula says X is equal to the opposite of B plus or minus, and then in under the square root, we're going to have b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So what exactly does that mean? So to start off, what we want to do is to fill in what a, b, and c are. And if you guys look, I've already defined the numbers for all three terms. So when it says the opposite of b, that's just saying that, hey, if b is a negative 8. When we plug it in here, it's going to be positive 8. And if it's positive 8, then it's going to be negative 8. So when I start filling in the quadratic formula for this problem here, we're going to have x is equal to positive 8 plus or minus. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to take 8 and square it minus 4 times 1 times c. So understand, guys, right now all we're doing is plugging in the values for the variables, okay? All over 2 times 1. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to start evaluating. I'm going to simplify this problem. So we have x is equal to 8 plus or minus, and then we're going to start simplifying this. So 8 squared gives me 64, and then once we multiply 4 by negative, um, I'm sorry, negative 4 by 1, we're going to have negative 4. And then once we multiply negative 4 by 20, that's going to give us a positive 80. So if you're wondering how I got plus 80, this is how we got it. And this is all over 2 because, you know, 2 times 1, that is just 2, right? All right. So now we go ahead and what we want to do now is stay under that radical, under the square root. And we want to add 64 and 80 before we do anything else. So as I'm simplifying this problem, guys, it's going to be 8 plus or minus 144 over 2. Now, what makes a quadratic formula sometimes tricky is just forgetting our square roots. So if you remember, right, this is just 12 times 12. So what I want to do now is simplify. So that means I'm going to change that perfect square where I'm just going to take its root. So now I have x is equal to 8 plus or minus 12 over 2. So I'm going to box this off, and I want you guys to understand that we're going to have two different solutions. So the first one we're going to do, x is equal to 8 plus 12 all over 2. And when we simplify that, guys, that's just going to give us 20 over 2. Or we could just say that x is equal to 10, right? So that's the first answer. Now we want to go back. And instead of doing 8 plus 12, right, we're going to do 8 minus 12. That's where their plus or minus comes from, okay? So now for the second solution to the problem, we're going to do x is equal to 8 minus 12 all over 2. And once we simplify this, 
we should have negative 4 over 2. Or we could just reduce that fraction and say that x is equal to negative 2. And when we're talking about the roots to the quadratic um, formula or the zeros to the quadratic formula, our final answer will sometimes be expressed like this. x is equal to, and in embraces, we'll put our x values. Okay, so this is a basic introduction into the quadratic formula. Let's take it one more step. Now, let's say in our second problem, guys, what we have to understand is that this equation is not in the same format as the quadratic formula. So I'm going to have to rearrange it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add x squared on both sides, right? So I have x squared plus 2x is equal to 7. And then I'm going to go back, guys, and subtract 7 from both sides as well, right? So once I do this now, my equation is in that quadratic is in the same format as the quadratic equation. And now we could go ahead and actually start using the formula and plugging in our values. All right, so let's go back to blue. So now we have x is equal to, and then remember, it's the opposite of b. So if b is positive 2, that means it's going to be negative 2, right? Plus or minus, and then we have 2 squared, right? And I'll put the negative, guys. Just remember that it's, it's not going to change. Oh, I'm not sorry, not the negative. But even when it's a negative, I just want to point this out. When you square a negative, it's going to be positive. So if you forget your sign for b squared, don't trip, okay? All right, minus 4 times a, which is 1, and times c, which is negative 7. And we're going to divide this all by the answer of 2 times 1. All right. So now what we want to do here, guys, we're simplifying the problem like we did the last one. And once we do this, under our radical, we're going to have 4 plus 28, right? Because we should know that when we multiply negative 4 and negative 7, it'll give us a positive 28. So we're going to put that all over 2. And now I want to simplify what's under that square root, as in adding it, right? So once I add those two, I should get the answer of 32. So the biggest question right here now is if we don't if we don't have a perfect square under that square root, under that radical, right? Whichever word you use, how are we actually going to simplify this answer or this problem to get an answer? So there's two things you could do. You could give an approximation which I'll save for another video, or you could leave your answer like how I have it below, all right? So what we're going to do, we're going to go over to one more problem, guys, and this is a problem where we're missing an entire term. So this is what I mean. So they're going to give us the equation, and our equation for this last problem is going to look something like this. So our last problem, we'll have 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. And what I want you guys to understand, and let's make sure we put that square term, I'm sorry. What I want you guys to understand is that if you see a problem like this, what we need to know is that 2x squared is our a term, right? That 2 is our a term. And this 8 right here, this stands for C, all right? So essentially, we do not have a B term. So I want you guys to be very careful when you're trying to solve a problem like this, and we're missing either A, B, or C, because we could still do the problem. However, the process is going to be a little bit different. So when I go to plug this answer in or plug in the, um, the values for the quadratic formula, right? x is equal to the opposite of b. Guys, there, there is no b. So if there is no b, that means it's going to be replaced with 0, right? Plus or minus, and then when we're talking about b squared, that's 0 again, minus 4 times a, which is 2, 
and then times B, which is negative 8. I'm sorry, not B, but C, which is negative 8. And that is all over 2 times A, which is 2, right? Exactly. So at this point here, right, we can go ahead and now start simplifying. So we have X is equal to 0 plus or minus 64 all over 4. So just remember, guys, negative 4 times 2, right? This is going to give us negative 8. And then when we multiply that by the other negative 8, we'll have positive 64. So that's how we got that 64, if you guys are wondering. So now at this step here, we could forget about this 0 is not going to change the answer. And when we simplify, we're going to have an answer of x is equal to positive 8 divided by 4. And x is going to be equal to negative 8 divided by 4, right? Because we got to do the b plus and b minus. We didn't have b, so 0 plus 8 is going to give us positive 8 over 4 which gives us x is equal to 2. And then when we do 0 minus 8, we're going to get negative 8 divided by 4. So x is going to be negative 2. All right? So when you guys are working with the quadratic formula, please remember these very important things. One, we need to know the quadratic formula, right? Have to know what it is. We need to know what our A term is, B term is, as well as C. Once we do this, guys, just understand we have to plug it in, simplify, and if we have a perfect square, we're going to break it down. If not, we're going to keep it under the radical, and that should be our answer. If you found this video helpful, we're going to ask that you smash that like button for us and join us next time when we talk about greatest common factor and factoring. Thank you.